have given it a lot of thought, made calls, contacted sources. Are you ready? Trades. Come on. You know you're going to have trades. You can have trades. Anytime you have a lot of quarterbacks in the top 15, you're going to have trades. Okay. Fair enough. When you got defensive linemen, unless there's like a Aiden Hutchison or something like that kind of play, we don't have a dominant defensive player this year. We've got good ones. But we this is really an offensive draft. It's offensive tackles, wide receivers, quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, that's what this draft is. And, and it's, it is it is the best offensive tackle draft ever. I think you could seven have, of them in the first in the round. First round. Yeah. There's another seven in the second round. So it's a great offensive tackle draft, and a lot of teams need it. So here we go, my mock draft. All right, Chicago Bears number one are going to take, and Ryan Poles has shifted this the last year to offense. They're going to take Caleb Williams. They bring in Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Gerald Everett, last year DJ Moore. Poles, a former offensive lineman, started building up this offensive line three years ago with draft capital. This team will be offensively productive with a playmaker, the only college player the last two years that had 10 rushing touchdowns each year at least and at least 30 passing touchdowns with a bad O-line at Southern Cal. He goes number one. Number two, the commanders take big, strong, and sturdy Drake May. Bad offensive line. Sam Howell got sacked more than any quarterback. You're not going to go for a spindly quarterback in cold weather. They need a Justin Herbert clone. 6'4 to 6'4 and a half, 225 pounds. Big arm can move. This is not a great O line. He's going to get bumped around. The last thing you need is a 200, 205 pound quarterback. Drake may go second. I don't know if it'll work, but the New England Patriots need playmakers. They don't have them on the outside, and Jaden Daniels is a playmaker. He's got some Lamar Jackson. He'll run around. He'll throw it around. Listen, they're, they're sub-500 by nine games since Brady left, and he actually fits. I just don't know if Jared Mayo offensively can get him where he needs to be, but they just don't have enough speed and playmakers, so you might as well go put it at quarterback and see what transpires. By the way, Lamar Jackson didn't have a great receiving core until this year, and they won a lot of games. Patriots get Jaden Daniels. This feels like an easy one. Marvin Harrison, an all-time college receiver, goes to Arizona. They lost Hollywood Brown. Kyler Murray's got a star running back, a tight end he likes. He needs a number one receiver. Harrison's personality is a bit quiet and reticent. That's fine. Kyler will make up with it. He's in the headlines. They need a great playmaker, and I think this guy's in the Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson prototype of a star day one in the NFL. The Chargers trade down with Minnesota and get both of their first-round picks. This is what Jim Harbaugh, I'm told, wants. And the Vikings select J.J. McCarthy, who will sit a year behind Kevin O'Connell. Great left tackle, run back, two receivers. This is an offensive division. Darnold's not the long-term future, but like an Alex Smith with Mahomes, he'll be a great mentor for a year I think J.J. McCarthy is a B-plus prospect but in Minnesota with this coach and these pieces I think he can have real success the New York Giants are going to take Malik Neighbors who is like Odell Beckham but I think more durable they just don't have enough weapons they don't have playmakers they were 30th in scoring and I don't think they want the fifth best quarterback in this draft. I don't think Bo Nix for them works here or Michael Penix works here. Darren Waller, the tight end, is considering retirement. Saquon Barkley is gone. They got to give Daniel Jones something to work with and they don't want to take a huge cap hit. And this kid can fly. He, he's got some Odell Beckham, but a little bit faster and maybe more durable. This feels pretty easy. Titans take Joe Alt. Notre Dame tackle. They got a bad O line. The only way Will Levis is going to succeed, whether he does or not, is if he has some protection. Um, you know, he, he's athletic. I think he played a little tight end in high school. A dominant left tackle and a draft filled with them. Titans take Joe Alt. 
this feels pretty easy, too. They got the O-line receiver, quarterback, running back, tight end fixed. I think the Falcons take Dallas Turner, best rudge edge in the draft. They haven't had like a double-digit sack guy since Vic Beasley. So this team actually, and it's a defensive coach, defensive coaches, D'Amico Ryan's had a couple of first-round picks. He got a quarterback, and he got an edge rusher. All right, this guy got Kirk Cousins. He's going to go get an edge rusher. Um, again, they just they don't get double-digit sacks. They haven't had anybody since like 2016 in Vic Beasley. Uh, I think after getting Caleb Williams, the Bears would like to trade down. There's no takers, and they take Jared Verse, Florida State, defensive edge. Can't have a good enough pass rush when you're facing the Lions offensive line and all those receivers and skilled people for the Packers. They got to get Montez Sweat some help. They got a great corner, one defensive lineman. Let's get a second one. They only had 50 sacks last year under Matt Eberflus, 12 fewer than any other team. So they, Montez Sweat is the beginning. I think they'll go and get another edge rusher potentially later in the draft. They got older tackles, so I think the Jets get Rome Adunze from Washington. Garrett Wilson is their one. Mike Williams is good, but can't stay healthy. Alan Lazard's more of a three to a four. This kid will walk in very comfortably, be a two, big catching radius. Also an adult, a very disciplined, focused, hardworking player. No distractions from a noisy franchise. I think he will really work in New York. Rome Adunze, who I watched play 10 games this year, impact very early the chargers who move down to 11 in that trade with the vikings go offensive line maybe the best interior run blocking tackle in the draft you can move him inside or at right tackle the chargers take from oregon state uh talisi fuaga um he's just a mauler lost very few snaps all season just mauled people and one of the best run blockers in the class, they may slide him inside, probably keep him right. This is a team that couldn't rush last year, and I don't buy into a wide receiver with the Chargers. They want more picks. They want to get physical. I think later in the first round, they'll take an edge rusher or a defensive tackle. And at number 12, the Broncos trade down. They need more players. The Seahawks move up and take Michael Penix, the quarterback from Washington. He can stay in the same town. The Seahawks offensive coordinator was Michael Penix, offensive coordinator in college. Seattle doesn't owe Geno Smith any money next year. I think he throws the prettiest ball in the draft, including Caleb Williams. I think he throws a beautiful football. He gets his coordinator. You can say it's a bit of a reach, but Seattle's got their pieces. They've got corners they've got two backs multiple receivers a left tackle linebackers uh seattle's got a lot of pieces here i think they have the ability to give up some draft capital to take a guy who throws an absolutely beautiful ball tyler lockett dk metcalf uh tight ends seattle's ready to win so there is my first round. A couple of moves. I think Denver at 12 moves back. Just a couple of spots. So if they want to get Bo Nix, they can. But they need a second-round pick. They need draft capital because they, they got about six needs. And I think the Chargers desperately want back. They get two first with Minnesota. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.